81 sets. Oh my god, Chaos Emperor Dragon. This isn't real. This isn't real. 24 packs. Oh, in the second pack. No way. We got another triple tag. Two duelists. Oh, by the grid. Oh my god, I just lost the game. Oh, he's on <laughs> oh my god. You got it. One winner. There's no way you're gonna win this episode, dude. In this series, both Nim Nim and myself will be opening 24 booster packs or one box of a core Yu-Gi-Oh! booster set. We will build a deck and play a best two out of three, and the winner will receive a small prize to upgrade their deck. However, in each episode, we will open another box of the next set that was released moving in chronological order, constantly upgrading our decks before dueling each other at the end of each episode. But this time around, we'll be introducing side sets, a new banning system, and plenty of other fun surprises that you'll just have to watch to find out. This is the Yu-Gi-Oh! Progression Series Season 2. If you want 5% off any singles or sealed product, click the affiliate links in the description and use code SEMO5. And clicking the TCG Player affiliate link before you shop helps support us to provide you with more amazing content. You thought you'd never see it, bro. Episode 1 coming out with the strongest win, Team Gage. Already in the winner's circle, it feels great to be here. As we talked about, we have a lot of new things to share with you guys, and one of the things is some upgrades and changes to the winner's wheel. We decided we wanted this season to be a little bit more chaotic. With the introduction of side sets, there's already going to be a lot of crazy cards that we're able to get that we didn't have before, but we figured it wouldn't be right to sit with the same wheel that we had last season, too. So we've decided to completely revamp the wheel, and as you can see, it is crazy. Everything on this wheel, there are 10 different options, all with a 10% chance to hit, and they are all varying levels of craziness. We still have the wild cards from last season, Common, Rare, Super, Ultra, and Secret. If you nail one of these wild cards, you can then exchange it for a card of the same rarity or lower from the set. This still has the same restriction of only being able to be used for the last set. However, wild card Starlight, this is a new one. Obviously, Starlights aren't introduced until way later in the game, but the whole point of the Starlight wild card is it's a wild card that gives you the chance to go back to any historical set and take any card from there too. Like we said, had to be chaotic, so if you nail the 10% chance, you can take any card from Yu-Gi-Oh's history that we went through on the other sets, pick it up, add it to your collection. Not only do we have the wild cards, we got a couple other things to add here too. We have a redoer ticket, like Time Thief Redoer. This is essentially a mulligan that we have. We actually are starting with three of these redoer tickets. If we open up our set for the week and we're disappointed with the pulls, we can use one of our redoer tickets, shuffle it back, and get a whole new fresh 24 packs. If we nail a redoer ticket this week, we can add it to our collection of three of them that we already start with and use it for a different week when we feel like we need it. Traditionally, in the Yu-Gi-Oh! Progression series, we've played with traditional format. We are still going to play with the traditional format, allowing all cards that are banned to be put at one. However, prior, our only way to remove a card from the Yu-Gi-Oh! Progression series was when Alex and I made the decision to Hall of Fame a card. We decided we wanted to add a little bit something else to that too, to make it so we can have some one-sided advantage, and that is introducing the ban ticket. If you land a ban ticket, you can use that ban ticket at the end of an episode to then ban a card for the rest of the progression series until you can get it unbanned. Keep in mind, besides Hall of Fame, this is the only way to remove a card from the progression series. As for unbanning though, you do have the way to get it off the ban list, and that's by spinning it on the wheel. You can remove one of your cards, or any card that was Hall of Famed or banned before, we can take it off until it gets banned again. And then the last spot here is the one that's a little bit ambiguous, that is Snatch Steel. One of the most infamous cards of the Yu-Gi-Oh! Progression series history is now put onto the winner's wheel. If you spin Snatch Steel, you can force your opponent to trade you a card in your collection. That's right, I can take anything from Alex's collection and put it in mine. That being said, he can do the same thing from my collection too, he can take anything from my collection, and take it for himself. We decided as powerful as this Snatch Deal is, we're gonna make it optional. So if you land on Snatch Deal, you don't have to use your Snatch Deal, you don't have to exchange cards, you can say, tough luck buddy, we're still playing the same game we were before. That being said, it's not like tickets where you can stash the tickets and use them for later, you have to use the Snatch Deal the episode you roll it. So, if you decide you don't like anything on the wheel, you can still take your three tournament packs that you would win before. That's something we decided last season was probably the best way to do, we're gonna stick with that now. I think the wheel's too good right now, so I'm gonna spin the first wheel of season two of the Yu-Gi-Oh! Progression series. Let us see what I get. Give it a couple clicks, make it spin a lot. Obviously looking for the Ultras, I think that's the most powerful wild card. Oh my god, bro! 
Wild Card Ultra! I don't even have to look, man. I'm taking a Monster Reborn and I'm slapping it in the collection. That's fucking huge, bro. Oh my god. Progression Series 2. Great start, ladies and gentlemen. Alex, tell them about Metal Raiders, bro. I don't even care. You know, there really isn't much else to say. Gage definitely deserved to win the last episode because I could not draw removal to save my life in the face of a Blue Eyes White Dragon. I'm also kind of scared that he got some pretty decent pulls out of LOB. Hopefully our luck will turn around with Metal Raiders. We're Released on June 26th, 2002, this is going to definitely speed up the game significantly. Right off the bat in the ultra rare slot, Summon Skull, a 2500 one tribute, one of the strongest one tributes in the game. And yes, there are some better ones later on, but for now, this is definitely a force to be reckoned with. Metal Raider started to introduce a lot of effect monsters to the game. Cards like Mask of Darkness, White Magical Hat, the Kingslayer himself debuted in Metal Raiders. And while he may only have had a short time in the progression series, he was definitely one of the most iconic. Hopefully we can go ahead and repeat that performance. This set also introduces some very powerful two tribute monsters in the form of Sangha, the Thunder, Kazijin, and Suijin. These are very interesting because anytime if it's being attacked, it can actually target the attacking monster and make its attack zero, which actually gives it built-in protection and even a blue eyes white dragon can't topple it. And yes, while there are some bad cards in this set, this set gave us Magician of Faith, which we're definitely going to be looking to get. I really hope Gage doesn't get a single copy of this because he has Regeki and we already know how that goes from when I had Regeki Magician of Faith. This is just brutal. Moving down to the spells here, there is a lot to talk about. Tribute to the Doomed is actually some of the best removal we have access to in the early stages here. It does come at a discard two for one, but it doesn't have to be a face-up monster, so we will happily take that. Change of Heart is a game-changing ultra rare that I really hope we can access. We didn't have this at all at season one, so if we could get it for season two, that'd be fantastic. And then, of course, we have the Searchers and Sengen and Witch of the Black Forest, which is a little bit later on, but the these are also going to dictate a lot moving forward as well, because we've seen the power that Sangen and Witch offer. The fact that we can tutor for almost anything in our deck is invaluable. Seven Colored Fish is also the new all-star beater coming in at 1800 attack. It's also a common, so if we can nab a few of these, I'll be very happy to see it, because this will be relevant for at least the next several episodes. I sometimes forget just how many cards are actually in this set, because getting down here, there are some Haymakers, Barrel Dragon, Solemn Judgment, Magic Jammer, Seven Tools of the Bandit, Horn of Heaven, Shield and Sword, Sword of Deep Seated, Block Attack, Robin Goblin is another very terrifying card in this set. And let's also not forget Mirror Force, ladies and gentlemen. This is another card that actually dodged Season 1, so let's see if we can go ahead and get it in Season 2. And even Stimpak and Heavy Storm here down at the bottom. I mean, there are just so many good cards that we can pull here, but unfortunately, we have to start with the Pity Pack. We are opening Tournament Pack 1, unfortunately, because now we're no longer in OTS Pack or Astral Pack or Champion Pack territory. Let's Let's flip it up. Uh, Axe Raider is actually pretty good, all things considered. 1700 vanilla. I'll take it. Let's add it to the collection. We've got some Metal Raiders to crack. Right. I'm sure Alex filled you in all about Metal Raiders. Huge set today. Lots of really, really powerful cards in this set and powerful effect monsters introduced that we want to pick up too. Sangins, Witch of the Black Forests, as well as any of those banned spells and stuff too. We're looking for all of them. Let's see if we get lucky. 24 packs of it. Gimme, gimme. Oh, oh, oh. oh, bro, pack number one, Heavy Storm. You know it. You know it. I got the back row removal this time, Alex. What are you going to do? Reborn Heavy is so powerful. Oh, my God. Already an insane start, dude. Oh, Time Wizard, bro. He's pretty cool, but he is extremely gimmicky. I don't have a feeling I'm ever going to play Time Wizard, but hey, man, it's a cool, iconic ultra. I'll definitely pick him up. There's one Sangin. That is our first Sangin to pick up. One of the biggest cards in the game. Definitely going to be using it later on in the game and also currently. All right, you guys, 24 packs of Metal Raiders coming right up. We need some seriously big hits if we're going to turn this around and give Gage much of a challenge because his pulls are already looking much better than ours. So let's flip up pack number one and see. Shield and Sword is a great start. This is removal, technically speaking, in like a convoluted way, but we'll take it. Okay, there's a super rare. There are plenty of better super rares we could have pulled, but Karibo is what we are working with here. God, if that was like a heavy storm or the myriad of other cards this could have been, I would have been much happier. Oh, Barrel Dragon Ultra Rare. Now, this is cool, but the problem is, again, this could have been like a change of heart, a mirror force. There's a lot of better Ultra cards this could have been. We still have a lot of packs to go, but this is a house. If we can actually drop this, that might be pretty game determining. Also, I don't want to discount Robin Goblin because this probably has more longevity than Barrel Dragon, if I'm being honest. 
fuck this card, bro. <laughs> fuck this card. Garnacia Elephantis is a vanilla. That, there's not much more to say about this. It's on the weak side, like Red Eyes Black Dragon level. All right, coming up in the last five packs here. I got Heavy Storm and I got a Sangin, which is good. I'd like to get a little bit more on top of that. But so far, as for the pulls for Metal Raider, I don't think it's worthy of doing even a... um. Uh, uh, recycle here. Barrel Dragons, and it's an ultra rare, man. It's Barrel Dragon, but uh, another white magical hat? I'll take it. Pretty good light monster to have early on. Cannon Soldiers, like whatever. Uh, Ryukushin Powered's a 1600 though, and that actually matters quite a bit because we do start to just immediately power creep a lot of LOB's monsters, so we'll take it. Same thing with a card like Blue Winged Crown. Another 1600 body. Really can't go wrong. Okay, there's our first seven colored fish. Very happy to see this early on because I want to get a playset of this. Also a Paralyzing Potion. This isn't removal, but it stops Gage's monsters from attacking. It's a very good card when we're in a format that doesn't have a lot of spell and trap removal, so this does actually work better than you might think. A second Karibo! Are you serious? What is with the Karibos? Is this like some Deckmaster spirit bullshit? Come on! Sangen, there we go, let's go. It is a rare, so I mean, it was pretty likely we were gonna pull this, but when you've seen some of the luck that we've had in some episodes, I don't take anything for granted. Sangen, happy to see it, it's locked in the collection, we're good. Ooh, Horn of Heaven. That is a pretty sick pickup. Uh, nice ultra rare to grab. And then uh, a great moth here. Last two packs. Anything that I can nab up in the close here? Nope. Last pack. Come on, something big. Witch. Nah. All right, I got a Sangin, which I'm not upset about. I'm pretty sure just playing one Sangin is going to be fine for me for the foreseeable future. See how it works out. Other than that, couple ultra rares. Not going to use a mulligan this time. I'm pretty satisfied with the pulls. Heavy Storm, definitely, definitely a big one. Yeah, actually, you know what, actually? I'm looking at back to... Dude, I don't have any Magician of Faith or anything, too. That's one of the big cards that I missed in Metal Raiders last time. And it's definitely one that I want to have. I mean, outside of that, there's, like, the cards like Mirror Force, Solemn J, and stuff like that. But is it enough to warrant a mulligan and risk losing my Heavy Storm? As weird of a choice as it is, ladies and gent, I think I am going to redeem the first redoer coupon or read your ticket i think i'm gonna mulligan this heavy storm is sick to pick up and everything but i feel like metal raiders is one of those sets that has really good rare monsters and only getting a singular sangin is on the low end i feel like i can do better let's give it another go let's let's see what we can do here block attack is also another fantastic piece of removal again paired with a monster i want to see more spells like this because in tandem with some good stat line monsters we're gonna have a pretty okay deck going into this episode oh and there we go dark elf as a prime 2k beater it does cost a thousand life to attack but that's perfectly fine because this actually contests most of the format. Okay, and another Sangen. Now, Sangen's not going to stay at multiple copies for long, but we can at least abuse it while we can, and I wish this were a Witch of the Black Forest in all honesty, because then we get one in one, so hopefully in our next 10 packs, we can at least pull a Witch. What? Three Karibos! Why? <laughs> Why the fuck is going on? Oh my god. I also think this is like my third or fourth Shadow Ghoul as well. Like the rares are just not going my way. Stimpaks also of note, prevent rat to 2k defender as well. Mooka Mooka is actually an interesting rare. This card gains 300 attack and defense for each card in our hand. And so in the early stages, when we still have a full grip, this card is actually a bit of a force, but in the late game and even the mid game, this card kind of gets worse, but it may just be worth playing just because we can maybe see it turn one. 24 packs, Metal Raiders, let's give it another go. Let me get a couple of Magician of Faiths. Please, please give me a couple of those. That's what I'm looking for. Pack number one. There's no Heavy Storm in this pack number one. Don't worry, we still got hope. Sangin, pack number two off the back. That's a really big pickup. I'm happy with that. Not gonna even talk about it. Not gonna even talk about it. It's fine. Gate Guardian's okay. Twin-headed Thunder Dragon. Oh my god, the hollows keep coming in. None of the rares that I'm looking for, though. Mask of Darkness is the opposite of what I'm looking for. I'm looking for Magician of Faith. I also want to point out, this is like my fifth Princess of Tsurugi, which that means this could have been like five copies of Witch or Sangan or just like a relevant rare, uh, what is it, Shield and Sword even, like just anything besides this. Okay, well, there's a third Sangan. Like, again, I wish that was Witch of the Black Forest because we're not going to be able to abuse three Sangan as much as I would like to. Okay, there's another seven colored fish. Nothing else too great. Share the Pain is like pretty bad removal, but it's like somewhat playable, at least compared to the rest of this pack. Karibo super rare, yo, and a Thunder Dragon. You know what? Thunder Dragon's actually pretty cool. I think this is one of the commons that we just didn't get any of in the last season. If I can get three of those, this is a really good advantage engine to be able to add to my deck. Karibo, on the other hand, yeah, it is what it is. Oh, that's a big one. Change of heart. Huge spell card to pick up. Gargantuan. I'm still looking for Moth. Magician of Faith. We're halfway through, but this is to make up for, I guess, the Heavy Storm. I'll definitely take a change of heart. Suwajin too. All right, that's a pretty good double tribute monster to be able to add. One of the better ones, if I remember, of those uh, Gate Guardian pieces. 
Witch! Yeah, okay, this was definitely a good mulligan, dude. I definitely needed that. As, as bad as it to lose Heavy Storm, picking up a Witch, a Sangin, and then also Sui Jin as well, Change Heart, seems really strong. Um, still no Magician of Faith, but I definitely think this is on the right track. All right, last three packs. No Magician of Faith, but you know it is what it is. A second Sangin's fucking gargantuan, though. Yeah, this was definitely a really good mulligan. Last two packs, anything big in the close here? Can I, can I get them off? No, no luck in the moth. I got the thousand dragon though, bro. Look at him, man. The secret rare. All together, dude. I think this was a lot better than the first time around. A couple really good generic monsters to be able to plug in for this episode. As well as, I think we actually have two thunder dragon. So we have a self-sustaining engine in there too. Uh, definitely, I think this was the right choice to mulligan these Metal Raider packs. I'm excited to build with them. See what we can do. All right, you guys. Only a few packs left of Metal Raiders. Gotta be honest, um, not super thrilled. We have three Sangen. We still don't have... Have a Witch of the Black Forest. I don't think I've seen a Juragumo either, which is a bit concerning because that's like the best beater in this whole set, even if we only play for like one episode. So let's flip them up and see. There's the Kingslayer. All right. I was going to get pretty upset if we didn't get at least a single copy of him. I'd like to have multiple, but I think this will probably replace our copy of Trihorn Dragon just because at least it has built-in protection. I don't know if we're still going to play two tributes though. We'll have to see. Going into our second to last pack here. Let's see if we get anything good in the close. Oh, that pack's not too great. Uh, Ryukishin Power's okay, but I don't think we need any more copies of it. Last pack. Can we please just get something crazy this time around? Please. Oh my God. Wow. Wow, uh, pretty lackluster actually. And I gotta admit, I'm pretty disappointed. We also didn't get a Witch of the Black Forest either because I think we missed out pretty significantly on not getting one of those because we're only gonna be able to take Sangen uh, moving forward and that's a bit rough. So we're gonna have some deck building to do. So let's get into it. Coming off of our hot win, our deck looks even more fierce than it did last episode. Adding a whole bunch of killer staples that you've seen already like Change of Heart, Monster Reborn. Uh, these cards are just absolutely ridiculous. And pairing it with a whole bunch of decent cards that I picked up that we have haven't seen last season uh the clowns there's clown control which is actually a pretty cool deck that i wanted to try but i don't think i ended up getting any of the clowns back in the day now we've actually got a pair of both crass and dream when these guys change their position dream destroys a monster and then kraus bounce one these are both pretty good for control to pair with our swords of revealing light when alex is just not playing the game and we're able to just do our thing we can manage his board follow it up with an otk with something like blue eyes or you know a stacked mucka mucka or something like that i think last time we just played jirai gumo and just sat with the jirai gumo which 22 is big on its own, no lie, but we want to be a little bit more proactive. So I decided to play some of the more defensive cards like the Medors, the Rats, to sit just in defense until we're able to build up a board with our clowns, pop off and manage this board, and then just go for the kill. Cards like Change of Heart, Raigeki, Monster Reborn. I think with these types of power one-ups, it should be impossible for us to lose. See how we do? Damn, maybe this really is the age of Gage. I don't know what his pulls look like, but ours were not fantastic. So let's do the card by card, I guess. Uh, we have a Crass Clown, which is like a discount Hane Hane because if we switch it from defense to attack that includes face down, it bounces a monster back to the hand. So that could be relevant if we pair it with something like Robin Goblin because maybe he'll be afraid to attack things like a 2k defender. Dark Elf is great because it is a 2k attacker even though it does cost a thousand life but at the very least, it's a good defender as well because we could just slap it down and just pass and he has to kid over it. Muka Muka is going to be very good in the early game. Hopefully we see it early on. Three Sangen is some of the best pulls that we've gotten. However, we don't have a lot of great things to grab with it because most of our big offensive monsters have obviously more than 1500 attack. We can get like Muka Muka, which is cool. We can get Unhappy Maiden, White Magical Hat, some of our 2k defenders as well, but it just gets us more cards essentially. Shadow Ghoul is the only tribute monster I'm playing. This card kind of just sucks. I mean, mid to late game, this card can get gigantic, but I don't really feel like investing multiple monsters into a tribute for Gage to just Fisher it or Raigeki it is a wise move. And so that's why I'm not playing the Barrel Dragon or the Sangha of the Thunder. I just think they're too high investment for this. And so Shadow Ghoul Cool. I think it's slightly better than like Flame Cerberus because although it starts at a lower attack, mid to late game, this actually gets bigger. And what I don't like about Flame Cerberus is that it specifically loses to Jirai Gumo, which by the way, I pulled zero of. Then we have two Unhappy Maiden. I like this because if we're just close to death, we can just set this and then like it buys us another turn essentially because there's very few ways Gage can actually get rid of this that isn't by battle, especially if it's set. He would have to like exactly Raigeki this or like share the pain or something. But if he wants to do that, so so be it. One white magical hat. We have to play the Kingslayer. Is it great? Nah, 
not so much. I mean, if we're really far ahead, this is going to seal the game up, but we'll see. Two seven colored fish, only got two. Fantastic. Uh, three blue winged crown is our next biggest monster. Two giant soldier of stone, 2k defender, same thing with prevent rat. Two reaction powered, also only got two of this. And we're also playing three skull red bird. I'm siding mountain because gauge may not play this anymore. And this actually puts skull red bird to 1750, which means it actually hits over everything besides seven colored fish, dark elf, and uh, jurai gumo. So that's kind of good, but mountain does help him out as well, which is why I don't want to play it. And then spirit of the harp rounds out our monsters. For the spells, only a single copy of block attack. I can't believe this since some of these are commons, but I guess we got one. So that's decent. Double fisher, three of probably the worst card in, in existence, but it's good enough for this, I guess. Germ infection. The attack of a non-machine type monster equipped with this card is decreased by 300 points at each of its standby phases. That's each of my standby phases since I'm the one who owns the card. So in theory, if Gage has a card that's too big for us to hit over, we can set one of our six 2k defenders, then equip his monster with germ infection. He won't be able to hit over this most likely because the attack reduction doesn't happen immediately. It has to go through a full turn cycle. Then on the next turn, let's say it's like a seven colored fish, right? It goes down to 1500 and then one of our monsters can most likely get over it. So it's like the slowest removal spell in existence, but I'm kind of desperate. We also have two paralyzing potion. I wish I just got three of this, but you know, that's metal raiders. Pot of greed, shield and sword. We did get one of this, which is pretty nice. Stim pack is our only equipped spell that, you know, is for our monsters. We didn't get any uh, sort of deep seated. We didn't get another stim pack. We just got the one, the two stop defense from LOB and a Robin Goblin. The extra deck is completely irrelevant. And for the side deck, I already talked about the tribute monsters and I'm not, not really a fan of them, but I have them in here anyway, in case I change my mind. Grave Digger Ghoul and three soul release in case maybe he's on Shadow Ghoul or maybe he has some synergy to get stuff from the graveyard. I don't know. The two mountain for the Skull Red Bird and the Blue Winged Crown could come up. This also makes Blue Winged Crown trade with seven colored fish. So that could be relevant to share the pain. This is more removal, but the problem is it comes at a two for one and your opponent gets to pick the monster that they actually tribute. So it's only good if Gage only has like one monster. So I figure with share the pain, if we get into an instance where we can like sack Sangan or like Unhappy Maiden and make him lose a big monster, that's pretty good. But I want to assess game one first to see how desperate I am for removal. And then three tremendous fire. If these games go close, this can actually deal a lot of damage very quickly. And I can pretty easily side out of some cards here and I wouldn't miss them. But I can't wait to see what Gage got because uh, if his luck is anything like it was in LOB, this is going to be disgusting. So ladies and gentlemen, let's not make you wait any longer. It's time to duel. So Gage, how did it feel to spin the new prize wheel of the season two of the progression series? I'm dying to know how that came out. That wheel, Alex, I, I feel bad you won't get the chance to spin it, man. It is it is so <laughs> crazy, bro. The wheel is so cool. I feel like all the options besides, you know, the wild card common are ridiculous. And the fact that they're all unweighted too, oh my goodness. Yeah, I think it's definitely going to add a bit of a chaos to the series for sure. But I think if you win, you definitely should be getting something crazy oh, for yeah. it. And it's funny how it, like for episode two, everything applies in the wild card section to just the first set, right? Yeah, yeah. So it's like take your pick from LOB, which is still pretty good, all things considered. Uh, how do you feel about your Metal Raiders pulls, though? I feel like my Metal Raider pulls were really, really above average, Alex. Okay, making me nervous. How are yours? Though? Making I me mean, nervous. You ask me all the time, but how are yours, dude? Uh, we'll just get to the game. I think. Uh, I think I'd rather. Right. I think I'd rather get to the game because I think it's more exciting to show you rather than to tell you. Let's shout the patron. It is Troy Morris. Thank you for the support gonna have a bit of a battle here for the rock paper scissors yeah all right at least we even the score yeah on i was this, gonna say so even good. score on rps but it won't be an even match don't worry oh it is gonna be an even match after this one one baby i'm coming for that wheel and i think the setup is probably the move i'm gonna go first Still we'll go see first? if i regret all right, man. it i see you decide to play four monsters in your <laughs> I, I, I did i added to them i added to them <laughs> all right man well good luck right. let me see what you got you as well i have a humble t set and pass go ahead Ahead. I'm going to draw for turn. I'm going to go standby phase main. Dude, you're up to. I'm going to do set pass. Go ahead, bro. Just a set pass. Okay. Interesting. Uh, I'll go ahead and draw. It's a lot of things that could be, uh, none of which are exactly good for me. So I don't exactly know how I want to proceed here. It's probably a 2k defender. Uh, it could also be any of the searchers in Witcher Sangen. This is tough. I actually think I'm going to set and pass. Go ahead. Sure, man. No problem. I'm going to draw. 
Standby phase, main phase. All right, I'm gonna drop a normal summon. I'm on a normal summon. Jirai Guma. There he is. Big okay. Man. I think a the lot of people- spider is back. People might remember him from season one, dude. 2200, he's big. You're still playing the bugs. We're in a new <laughs> season and the bugs are back. <laughs> hey man, new season, new year, same me. I'm going to just not attack with the Jirai Guma. Weird, I don't want to pay half my life points. I'm just going to pass it over to you, though. Bro. Why not, buddy? I think that'd be a great idea into one of two sex cards that could be literally anything. That seems like a great plan. Okay. Uh, we'll go to main one. You just kept that set, so you obviously don't want to reveal it at the moment. Uh, what are you up to? Well, I feel like we're going to have to take care of this eventually, so I guess we'll just address the issue now. Uh, I will go ahead and run myself out a blue winged crown. Cool. Yep. Let's block attack the Jirai. Yep, that'll do it. Okay. And we'll just hit over him. Sure. Yep. And we'll throw it to you. All right, man, I'll draw. Standby phase, main phase. He is so happy, and I am too. Give me that pot of gold. Hey, game. there he is. One, sure. Draw your two, two, buddy. Broken. Broken. That's pretty good. All right. Uh, I'm going to activate. <laughs> I'm going to activate Raigekia. <laughs> Oh, yeah. This is, you know, this is just like the retribution saga for you at this yeah, point. Yeah, I'm going to lie. That feels pretty They're good, bro. They're all gone. See, They're unhappy all gone. Maiden. What the heck? The battle phase. Oh, that card seems bad, bro. Oh, my God. I'm going to normal summon Ryu Kinshin powered. Sure. I'm going to punch you for 16. I'll take the 16. Beautiful. That's fine. All right, man. Your turn. At least I got the Regeki out of you. So, I mean, it could be worse. Uh, <sighs> setting it past. Go ahead. <laughs> Let's go. I'm going to draw. Sure. Standby phase, main phase. All good. I'm going to normal summon Dream Clown. Ooh, that's Pretty annoying. Cool, huh? Sure. I'm going to go battle phase. I'm going to poke into this phase down. On attack declaration, I will activate Robin Goblin. Yo! <laughs> this giant stone soldier uh, here. All right. Okay, that's fine. Giant soldier of stone. So I'll take battle damage. That's cool. Yep. And, then... and we get to rip a card out of your hand. So let's go ahead and rip this one. Which one? I'm sorry. The one closest to your deck. No! Come on. Any other one, bro. Pick a deck. <laughs> That's what the die rolled, buddy. Uh, it was my fissure. <laughs> okay, nice. Good. All right, man, fucking Robin Goblin, huh? Oh, man, that's going to rip me apart, too. Oh, damn, the giant soldier's just a little too big. I am going to go to the end of my turn. Go ahead. Ooh, okay. We'll draw. Uh, I think that's good enough. Um, We're going to have to deal with this and take advantage while we can. So I'm going to run out my Ryukushin powered. Go sure. to battle. Sure. Hit your clown okay, for four. Um, on damage calculation, I am going to discard Karibo so I don't take battle damage. Whoa! Okay, well, to be fair, like, this basically just traded for, like, any card in your hand. Yeah, I mean... So. <laughs> yeah, it's not bad. Not bad. Uh, I will pass. Go ahead. Cool. I'm gonna draw for turn. St On the Karibo, huh? Yes, sir. Okay. Standby phase, main phase. That's probably, like, the best card in my deck, honestly. I'm just gonna sack two of my monsters. Got the blue eyes? I, I could have the blue eyes. I could also have something else. Uh, I'm going to summon... You ready for this? Uh -huh. Suijin. Ooh, okay. This is a pretty good pull from the set. Yeah, Suijin's crazy, too. I think it's one of the better ones, just being able to sink one of your dudes to zero uh, if it's your turn. So I'm going to go battle phase, and I'm going to attack over... Um, I think this giant soldier is going to be a little bit more of a problem in the future, so I'll get rid of him. Sure, get rid of him now. Uh, I'll go main two. Not scared of any spell trap removal unless you pulled a heavy storm. We'll find out. I'll set two and pass. Go ahead. Got two. Well, buddy, you know, you got to draw two, so Only I think fair. it's my turn Only as fair, well. man. Go ahead and take okay. your cards. All right, uh, we're trying. We are trying. Uh, how do we want to do this? Hmm. I think I'm just going to go ahead and set and throw it to you. All right, uh, I'm going to draw for turn. Standby phase, main phase? Sure. I'm going to pitch Thunder Dragon, and I'm going to activate Ooh, the, the Thunder Dragons. Yeah. Okay. Don't All get right. too excited. We actually excited. got some this yeah. time. <laughs> Don't get too, get too excited. I don't get three. I will pick up one from the deck, though. Okay. Ooh, drew the other one. Yeah. Well, I mean, it could be, or it could be anything. It's else. good for Robin Goblin. It if is. Anything. He's Robin. I'm gonna activate Swords of Revealing Light. I was really wishing you didn't have anything to stop this. It is my Crass Clown. Oh! Oh, that's crazy. Yes. Now you don't get the effect either. That's very powerful. Uh, I can still get the effect. Well, if you but... change it, but you ain't gonna change it because it's gonna. Die. <laughs> I was about so, to I mean... say, I think you're gonna let me. Yeah. No shot. All right, bro. Uh, I am going to activate. Are you ready for this? This is gonna be cool. Mm -hmm. Oh my god, bro! You're gonna shit your pants. I'm gonna activate Monster Reborn, and what? I'm going. You got to... an Ultra Wear Wild card. I Fuck did. Off. I did. Oh my and god! Alex... I saw you peeking in that graveyard. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's pretty cool. I'm gonna target my Dream Clown. Oh my god. Yeah, Dream sure. Dream clown, baby. He's out. Yes, sir. I am going to go battle phase and I'm going to sui jin into your uh, crass clown here. 
Sure. Cool. And I can't change its position for Dream Clown this turn, but that's okay, man. I'm not worried about it, because next turn it's going to be able to start dealing with your board. Uh, I will just end my turn here. Go ahead, man. You got such a combo now. It's disgusting. Okay. I'm going to go to main one. Well, I guess this is as good as time as any to do this. Uh, I am going to activate Germ Infection targeting your sewage. <laughs> Oh, okay. What the fuck? <laughs> All right. Yeah. That's so fine. every one of my standby phases, your sewage is going to get sunk by 300 attack. Okay. I'm not worried about it. That's fine. Yeah. Uh, you shouldn't be because <laughs> uh, sewage has an effect anyway. So, uh, well, Dream Clown's just going to eat me alive. So I guess I'll just pass. All right. That's one turn on swords. No problem. I'm going to draw. Stand by main. I am going to normal summon Witch of the Black Forest. Gross. The yeah. witch has returned. All right. I'm going to go to my battle phase. Sure. I'm going to sewage in into your dude here. It's minus. It's not minus anything. It's only no, it's not minus back. anything. This card's not that good. Okay. <laughs> and I'm going to go 12, 11. So 23 total. That's fine. Yep. All right. Your turn, dude. We'll draw. Uh, Let's see here. Uh, I am just dead. Good job. Yep, yeah. <laughs> How's it feel to not have a Raigeki or Dark Hole, bro? Man? It sucks. It must. It sucks. It At least must. you had a Dark Hole in Season 1. I, I don't have know. any board wipe, which hey, is terrifying. Don't worry, bro. Let me see what you got in a little bit here. Let's go Game 2. If I can at least take it to a game three, like I'll feel pretty good this time. But now that you have reborn as well, courtesy of the wheel, I uh, don't know exactly how this one's going to go. Wheel was um, kind of nice to me today, man. I'm not yeah. going to lie. Did you get which wild card? Did you just get the ultra? I just got I mean, the ultra. Was... Yeah, I got the okay. ultra flat out. So I was like, oh, okay. all right, cool. I'll take that. No problem. <laughs> pretty good. Uh, I went first and like that's how that went for me. So do I want to go first again? You could take your extra card, man. No problem. Then you get to set up. I don't know if that's good. I think I'm going to go first. Like All setting right. up just seems right, but I don't know. All right. Hopefully this one's good. Good luck, buddy. Best of luck, Dolst. I'm just going to set and pass. Go okay. ahead. I will draw for turn. I'll go standby phase, main phase. All right. I'm going to do just about the same there. I'm going to set a card and I'm going to end my turn, man. Go ahead riveting uh i'll draw not a lot going on i'm just scared of regeki man yeah we'll throw down another uh we'll pass it to you and i'll uh i'll set a face down that's night. fine all right i'm gonna draw for turn yeah. standby phase main phase all right well, let's get aggressive i am going to normal summon there are so many colors seven colored fish there it is the best card of the set yes sir it's i'm fine. gonna go battle phase i'm gonna throw it into this face down here the one you just set it is nothing in the face of my prevent rat. Take it your is 200. Not. That's a little bit too much. Prevent rat's okay. I'll go main two. I feel like that prevent rat's going to be a problem in the future here. So I'm going to fissure it. And it's gone. And it's your turn. And we'll draw. Uh, that would be pretty good. Uh, well, buddy, I think, fortunately, I think I'm just going to set one and pass. Go oh, ahead. no monsters, Alex. I'm sorry. I'm going to draw for turn. Standby phase, main phase. All good. Cool. Uh, I'm going to go battle. I'm going to poke sure. this face down. On attack declaration. Sure. What you got? Robin Goblin. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Flip, Flip up. up rat number two. No doubt. Okay. Take your pick. All right. So you're going to take your 200 as well. Uh, let's hit that. I'm actually okay with that. That's my blue eyes, white dragon. Oh, great. I just put it in the graveyard for reborn. Yes, Fantastic. you did. Thank you, bro. Appreciate you. All right. I'm going to go to main phase two here. And uh, I'm going to set a card. Sure move. Okay, we'll draw. Uh, that's pretty good. Uh, this is actually kind of sick, though. I am going to flip shield and sword. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah, all right. So everything's going to get flipped for the turn. So my rat is quite swole right now. <laughs> He's a big rat, bro. Big He's a rat. big rat. But the problem is shield and sword only lasts for the turn. I think I got something that's a little bit better than the rat, though. I am going to normal summon white magical hat. No way. Yeah, that's okay. Battle phase hit the seven colored fish. Alex, you thought you were ready, bro. Coming in. Do you have the Karibo? again, bro. I got the Karibo. Oh Karibo my for the God. Save. I was about to just end you. Two I cards know. going out of the hand. That would have been the end. All right. I'll just pass on that. Dope. Go ahead. All right, man. I'm going to draw for turn. I'm going to go standby phase, main phase, okay? Part of me feels like you played those Karibos just for white magical hat. Could have, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, it's a super rare, bro. I got lucky and pulled one, actually. It is a super. All right. Let's see here. How am I going to handle this? All right. Uh, I will flip up my 
my Sangin that I've sure. been sitting on for a minute here. I'm going to go to battle. Okay. I'm going to crash my Sangin in your white magical hat. That okay. makes sense. Cool. And then, uh, oh, my bad. Not that. Come on. And then I'm going <laughs> to trigger Sangin. That's a very reckless Sangin. Yeah, right? Got there. He's going hard. Off of my Sangin, I will pick up a Dream Clown. Sure. Cool. I am going to normal summon Dream Clown. Show me the swords. Yep, swords. Gross. Your move. This is like a god combo. All right, uh, we'll draw. Main one, it's like a bit futile to even play anything because it just dies. So honestly, I think I'm just gonna pass. Turn Amen. one on swords. No problem. I'll draw, like you said, turn one on swords. Off the top, I'm gonna pitch that Thunder Dragon. Cycle sure. for another. Pick up another T Dragon. Can I say, I also love how, even though we're going by like the limited list and whatever, Swords is just semi-limited. <laughs> yeah, yeah, who, who would have thunk it? I don't know why they did that. I'll go Dream Clown, I'll defense it and I'll pop your rat. Yeah, I figured. Yep, I'll set a card and I'll just pass a turn. Go ahead, Alex. Okay, uh, we'll draw. Well, at least now if I play something, I'm not like completely dead. So I will set and pass, turn two on Swords. All right, uh, I will draw. Standby phase, main phase. Sure. Yeah, this is total lock. I'm gonna flip Crass Clown. I'm gonna oh, bounce gross. back your face down. Sure. All right, I'm gonna dream clown to attack, and then uh, hold on. Let me make, let me do some math real quick. Oh my god. Oh, I can't. That's mandatory. Fuck. I thought I had it. Okay. <laughs> You had to be excited there for a second. I had myself excited too. All right, I'm going to normal summon Jirai Gumo. Oh, Jesus Christ, yeah. yeah. I'm gonna go battle phase. I'll go 12, 13, 5. You gonna attack with the boy too? I might. I might just split my half points. My half points. My life points. Your right half because. points? I'm not really too scared, bro. Like, I'm not, like, spooked of you, honestly. I'll do it. Whatever. I'll have my life points. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Well, you get to toss the coin. Oh, it's a 50 50. That's even better. Okay, so um, yeah. I'll call heads, okay? Okay. N what, what is it? Is it heads always shreds? Heads always shreds. Heads always shreds, bro. Oh, fuck. Ooh, okay. <laughs> this time. Okay. It doesn't. Well, I'll take 38. If there's a window of opportunity, you just gave it to me. Yep. So. All right, man. Well, good luck. Hopefully that window gets you I, I don't think there's actually a chance here. <laughs> Oh, uh, this is pretty bad. I'm going to set one and pass. Dope. Swords <laughs> expires. Ahead. I'll start my turn. I'm going to activate Reborn on Blue Eyes. Had the Reborn, yep. too, for the Blue Eyes. I'm going to clown pop. It was Unhappy Maiden, which only triggers when it's killed by battle. Congrats. Yo, buddy. man, double two O's back to back, bro. There's uh, literally nothing. I had all monsters. You didn't get, did you get anything do. from Metal Raiders, bro? Because I'm about to, uh, like make you No, my metal raiders was pretty garbage if i'm being honest i got let's take a look and see uh i got three sangans which Yo, was like last nice. series but uh no witches again like last series so that sucks honestly <laughs> i got three karibos actually yo okay uh which is like you know maybe i should have played them because maybe i could have bought another turn but uh aside from that i got a barrel dragon i got a song of the thunder just like you got your sui jin but kind of like didn't really care to play them all that much because i mean as you saw like there wasn't really an opportunity that i could like drop a two tribute and like you didn't have like a way to answer it mm -hmm. i also pulled dream clowns but i don't have a way to protect dream clown like yep. you do i yep. don't have any trap card that just protects it uh, or swords for that matter so i only ended up playing crass clown just because at least it's like discount hane hane right yeah. like it kind of works and so it is a way that i can like maybe if i go set turn one and you set two then i can like flip and bounce you back in tempo but like that's probably all the value that card's getting yep uh i didn't even get jirai gumo's game <laughs> oh my god that's so sad bro i think i'll yeah. too i got i got extremely lucky both times i opened metal okay players. so okay. yeah i did use the first mulligan ticket the first did you really ticket. i did man my first metal raiders pack was really good actually you know what i got in the very first pack mm. heavy storm wow I got heavy you storm mulliganed and I heavy. mulliganed it bro Gage, I mulliganed you didn't it. have any spell and trap removal I, for a I whole know, season bro, and you listen, mulliganed heavy you gotta hear me out though it's like opening metal raiders i felt like this set with all the magician of faiths and stuff like that it's a really critical set to get stuff early and i know we have dark beginnings but dark beginnings is the 14th set released for Yu -Gi Oh. it's so a ways that's still away. a ways away so i a figured i wanted to try to get myself the magician of faiths and stuff to get ready for goat format once we enter that era but alex on my mulligan even though i got rid of the heavy storm i still ended up on top because <laughs> you ready for this you probably got it again <laughs> i got a change of heart bro <laughs> oh yeah oh jeez. Yeah. okay i got a All change right. of heart in that mulligan that i was really happy about I, you, you can have a deep breath. I did not get any Magician of Faiths even the second time around. Oh, thank God. Yeah, okay. so I didn't get any moths, but I did end up with... <sighs> 
double Sangin and a witch. Okay. And, and that's almost like you, you only got, no, you only had one witch this time. You had two witches last time. I had time, two witch, so. one Sangin last season. Yeah. yeah. And we're also abiding by ban list, so like it's not as impactful yep. as it was last time either. So, yep. okay. Well, change of art still very scary. Uh, that's basically the snatch deal of this uh, progression series, it will seem. Yep. Uh, so, not happy to see that. I did also consider doing my mulligans as well. I just like, it's so hard to determine when it's worth using, mm -hmm. you know? It, it's such uh, a conundrum because do you wait for like later sets? Like I know these early sets can also set a lot of tempo, but at the same time, because the reprint sets are a part of the series now, it's hard to say like what the series is going to look like, you know, 20, 30 episodes from just the first two, mm -hmm. you know, like you could be like just waxing me the next, you know, few in a row, which I mean, fuck at this rate, you're probably going to be since you have, oh, like, you know, at least 10 DM staples at this point. So <laughs> I got a couple. I think yeah. definitely. Yeah, I think the way I looked at it is I felt kind of weird because I got that heavy and I was like, do I really want to use my redoer? And the yeah. thing was, is I figured we have three of them, which is already a bit. But also, as the series goes on, we do have the wheel to get additional redoers. Potentially. Yeah. yeah. Not guaranteed. Obviously, you need wins. And to be fair, you just got another win. So you may yep. be able to just reclaim a redoer ticket as a result of it. Yep. But I think I'm most curious to see what the fans think of all the different, you know, prizes we have in store for on the wheel. Because we've already just showed off a lot of cool things that makes season two really special, at least in our eyes. Like we've been planning this for like months. Mm -hmm. And so now the fact we actually get to execute a lot of like the theory of what we were thinking, I'm it's going to be a lot of fun. I'm getting my ass kicked so far, <laughs> which uh, is definitely a uh, change of pace for me. So we're going to have to see what we can do about it in Magic Ruler. Maybe that's where I use my redoer ticket to try to get a uh, snatch deal again. I have a but feeling we might use at least one or two of those for Magic Ruler. It's a big, big set coming up. It's a week. big set. Yeah, it's for sure. Not to mention uh, one of the first Hall of Famed cards in the series painful choices in there yes, as sir. well yes not sir. as important maybe in the beginning but later on that card gets very broken very quickly <laughs> yep we both had the privilege of pulling it last season but maybe only one of us will get lucky enough this time around so guys, that's going to wrap it up for another episode. Let's go ahead and shout the patrons as always. So big shout to Shout1317, Moto Cameron Smith, SJ Winchester, Kadok Meatball, Ian Musa, Tomb 0 x 3 Ike Iron Fang, Part 2, Pony Stark, Dan the Man, Hoban, Secret Guy, Ole, Yusuf Asano 5, MBT, Play Medulce, Mystic Walk, I Ship, MBT, and Simo, Cole T, Drake, Conic, Rockside, Dolly Wop, Logan, Thomas, Peter Gregory, Thomas, Selson, Jordan Coons, Calvin, Iron Blades, and Pure Ace, Jesse Wood, Tuner, Guys, and Brother Paul, Chris, Ho, David Liu, Ruxin's Horny Fan, Sky Rose, Dylan Hunter, John 2 Base, Extremely Vulgar Man, Brody Eastwood, Day Sir, Carlos DT, Flannel Daddy, Ashlyn Jensen, Give Me Speed or give me death seriously guys please read your cards tc gaming thanks for the sleeves dad matthew brady max mbt bathwater vendor tom russell why read your cards when you can just click buttons ban snatch shield for prog 2021 omar paint french girls like one of your mbts black acre the entire state of indiana these cards we are not the same you drink flat tummy tea i drink m bussy tea mbt fans scare me more than covid simping for simo abbott ygo ethan Steele, and horny bonking mbt fans thank you so much for watching and we will see you next time.